Language evolves to reflect changes in cultures, the way we understand people and issues. The word gay is a perfect example here. So is the ever-expanding acronym encompassing the spectrum of sexual and gender identities, LGBTQIA+, and then whatever comes next. But first, more about the word gay. For years, the everyday definition was having or showing a merry, lively mood. Today, of course, the first thing to come to mind is usually same-sex desire and behavior. Textbook, but textbooks are constantly being revised. By the early 1970s, gay was common parlance for homosexual, which had taken on a clinical connotation, suggesting same-sex attraction was a pathology. But this new use of gay really wasn't new at all. Flip back a few chapters in that textbook, gay had a sexual context going back to the 17th century. A gay woman meant prostitute. Gay man was a womanizer. A gay house, a brothel. It wasn't common, but gay also was used to describe same-sex attraction as far back as the 1930s, especially among gay people. As time went on, the word turned out to be inadequate for representing all orientations and identities, and that brings us to the evolution of the sexual spectrum acronym. LGB was commonly used by the late 1980s to represent the groups often called the gay community. In the 90s, T for transgender, people whose gender identity differs from the sex listed on their original birth certificate, was added to lesbian, gay, and bisexual. At this point, sometimes the acronym was used as LGBT. Other times it was GLBT. It was fluid. Today, the abbreviation is still growing. LGBTQIA+. The Q is for queer or questioning. Queer refers to anyone who is not straight or whose gender identity does not match the sex at birth. Questioning refers to people who are uncertain about their sexual orientation or gender identity. I is for intersex. That's somebody who's born with biological sex characteristics that aren't traditionally associated with male or female bodies. It's not an orientation or an identity. The A stands for asexual, people who experience little or maybe even no sexual attraction. And the plus sign is for all the other orientations, identities, and gender expressions. In other words, it's for inclusion, however far that evolves. There are some other letters out there that could be added, and in some cases they already have been. A New York Times glossary includes P for pansexual, someone who's attracted to all gender identities. D for demisexual, someone who needs a strong emotional connection before experiencing sexual attraction. And G for gray sexual, meaning a person sometimes experiences sexual attraction, but typically they do not. Some people have called for a consolidation here, just one universal single letter like Q to represent all identities and expressions as this acronym grows longer and longer. But as the next chapters of the textbook are being written now, still expanding. No signs of getting shorter.